welcome everybody this is pastor ben lim with the breaker where we are believing for breakthrough in every area of your life the bible says that he is bal parazam the lord of the breakthrough so are you ready for god to break through today we're going to talk about breaking through in the glory of god and today is our very good friend special guest dr david herzog and he's coming in all the way from arizona welcome dr david hey ben good to see you just got quick at it in my car sorry you couldn't get to a studio but hey this is real live tv so it's more fun this way oh absolutely i i love it because your car is like the ark of the covenant so it's a mobile studio like you said yeah we we love you my friend and we just so appreciate you and stephanie and and just the ministry that you've carried really the both of you have been trailblazers in the glory of god and the realm of glory so we're so excited today to talk about breaking through in the glory of God. Let me ask you, as we start off, Dr. David, what do you think are some hindering factors from hindering you into entering into the greater glory of God? Oh, I say the number one thing is distractions. People get distracted by social media, by the news, by life. They get distracted. You have to just lock yourself in with God if you want to break through. Here's, here's what I say. like You go to pray, and people go to pray, let's say, for an hour. And after an hour, they're looking at their watch like, okay, Lord, well, I've been here with you for an hour. Uh, you know, you know, I got things to do. I got to go to the bank. I got to go to the store. So you start making excuses why you need to leave. But then let's, then the glory starts coming in towards the end of your hour, let's say. Suddenly you're like, oh, man, I don't want to, I don't want to leave this place. Now you start making excuses why you could stay. Well, I could do the store later tonight. I could do that tomorrow. I could delegate this. So you know when you've reached it, when suddenly you make making excuses to stay. You want to shut down the day, just be with God. So. Uh, I think distractions is the number one thing. People don't realize how to get in the secret place. They pray, they worship, they go in tongues. But then there's a place where you have to wait on him. That's the part Americans, I think, have a hard time with with our fast-paced culture. The, the art of waiting on the Lord and the glory just begins to come in. Then there's this whole new level of intimacy, ecstasy. You're, you're so passionate. You're, you love it. You're like you're in heaven. You'll get visions. God will start speaking to you about your future. And things in your life are speeding up. So I'd say distractions are the number one thing to keep people from staying in that place where God can actually visit them. So I don't know if that answers your question. Well, absolutely, because I love what you said, Dr. David. So many of us in America, there's such a it's such a fast paced world and there's so yeah. much distractions with the fake news, et cetera, going on right now. But it's the art of waiting on God. I love what you said. It's the art of hearing God's voice. Rather than being formulative or waiting on the mechanics. But I believe in this season, we need to learn to separate and be like John the Baptist, who stilled his heart, stilled his soul, so he could hear clearly. And I believe God wants us to encounter him afresh like never before. You know, I, I love, uh, uh, you know, of course, you're Jewish. You know, of course, I've been grafted in. So, you know, in a sense, we're all Jew as well. But I love honoring the biblical feasts. Because these are times of greater glory portals. So talk to us about uh, how important it is for us to not only honor the biblical feasts. It's not an Old Covenant, Old Testament thing. But the biblical feasts are greater glory portals for you to enter into the greater things of God. Talk to us. Well, yeah, it's very simple. It's old and new. You know, Jesus said, I'm the Passover lamb. As often as you do this, meaning keep doing Passover, but just do it in remembrance of me. Like, I'm the lamb. I'm the reason for the season. Not It's not just for Jewish people. He foresaw Gentiles coming in, grafted in. He wanted them to partake of all the feasts. It's for anyone who is his people, physical or spiritual. Imagine Pentecost, if the, if the apostles had said, oh, that's for the Old Testament, you know, because Pentecost was a 3,000-year-old tradition that they celebrated the, the Torah, the Word of God. And then Jesus said, no, go to Pentecost. Wait on me. Pray like you normally do. Imagine if they missed it and they went, oh, Jesus fulfilled everything. We don't need to do Pentecost. They would have missed the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So these are divine rendezvous with God where God downloads things in a specific time period more than he would at other times of the year. And he specifically says, if my people will gather, if they'll seek my face, do certain things, he promises the rains, the glory, the favor, the prosperity, the harvest. And so, I mean, it'd be dumb to miss it, honestly. It'd be really dumb to miss it because he's, especially coming up now between Passover and Pentecost this year, 2021, I believe the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit's coming because we hear about the greatest harvest that's coming. 
but without rain, you don't get a harvest. It, we can't run off the harvest from 2020 or 2019. We need a fresh outpouring. Acts 2 led to people saved. Acts 4 led to multiplied. And they kept going, then multitudes. So I believe we are in for a huge outpouring of the Holy Spirit, an impartation, a glory, visitation, like it was in the book of Acts 2, Acts 4, which will lead to the great harvest of souls. A lot of Christians are burned out, tired, weary, mad. You know, like they need a fresh, because if the souls came in right now, the multi-millions, and half the church is like weak and upset and frustrated, you know, they need, we need an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I mean, you and I are fired up and others are, but the, the body of Christ needs to get really back to, to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the harvest of souls. The souls are so ripe right now. They're riper than they've ever been because of all the hardship. People have been, been broken down. Pride has been broken down. Uh, a lot of people's economy, health, fears, wars, rumors of wars. It's like in the, in the book of Matthew, you know, it says wars, rumors of wars, pestilence, um, earthquakes in various places, persecution. For some, they'll take you to jail. For some, they'll put you before the courts. And then it says, but this gospel of the kingdom shall I preach in all the world. So that, that's why I focus on that part. And then the end will come. So guys, we are right on the verge of the probably the last biggest harvest of souls, which means we're right on the verge of the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit that Joel 2.28 talks about. And so we're right there, guys. This is it. Like I believe we're just, we're right there. And the feasts are the open heaven portals often where God will pour out his spirit for the harvest. Wow, that's incredible. Absolutely. And we're seeing definitely an acceleration of the times right now because oh. the glory of God is accelerating things. But at the same time, the enemy in his wicked schemes, demonic agendas, things are also being accelerated in the demonic realm and kingdom. But it's oh. because Jesus is preparing the bride for his great return. So there's an acceleration that's taking place. And one of the things that I've said, Dr. David, uh, for about a year now, is that God has selected the greatest essential anointings for this generation. I mean, we need the glory of God today more than ever before. Why do you think the realm, the understanding, the topic, object of the glory is more essential today than maybe it was possibly 50, 500 years ago, even in America? Because people are feeling the oppression, they're feeling the, everyone's feeling the, the squeeze, I call it the squeeze, even ministries, you, even you're praying, you can feel the pressures trying to mold you, and you have to break through that, it's like a hurricane, you feel everything moving all the time, nothing's concrete, you know, even you set your schedule and God changes it, you, you set uh, to preach somewhere, it changes, you know, everything, the flights are changing, nations are closed, they're open, so it, it's a really uncertain times. And so the Lord told me when, when that happens, here the secret is press into the center of a hurricane or a tornado. They say the center is completely peaceful, but everything around it is crazy. So as this turmoil of the end times increase, you have to increase even more closer to the center of God. And then you'll be peaceful in the midst. Like he prepares a table in the midst of his enemy. So I think the glory is where that peace, you find that peace in your mind, in your soul, you know, the fears, the worry. The, once you're in that realm, you're like, Oh, it's like you're in heaven. Like you don't have a you don't have a care in the world, and so we all have to press into greater dimensions of glory to get to that place of of being on the rock, and especially us that are ministers, we have to be there because we're ministering to the people. They're, they're looking at us. We have to be in that place. There's ministers that are just going freaking out themselves, pastors and other people like scared, and and they, we all have to get to that place deeper in God, and then we are actually will be in the center of the hurricane. And wherever we go, we're shaking things up for Jesus, with Jesus. We're, we're destroying demonic structures, religious spirits, political spirits, sickness. And wherever we go, we're causing damage to the enemy's kingdom. So that's where we're coming into. Either we're going to be affected by Satan's kingdom or we're going to affect his kingdom. It's one or the other. There's no, more, there's no more neutral ground. And the glory is the weapon that we need. It's the presence of God's glory, intimacy on a higher level. And there's no weapon again. The devil can't penetrate that when you're in that realm. Absolutely. Amen. Definitely, we're going to see more separation, more distinction. Um, of course, I love what you said. The glory of God is our weapon, is our protection, our provision. We see even uh, as the Israelites exited Egypt, uh, you know, of course, it was the fire, the pillar of fire, the cloud of his glory, the cloud of his presence, yeah. which were manifestations of his glory, of his kavod. 
and that protected the people of God, even in the most strenuous extremities of the desert, of the wilderness. So whatever you're going through, expect supernatural provision. Amen. Expect supernatural provision. Any plague, COVID, etc., it will not touch you because you're walking in the will of God. Amen. Now, I know Dr. David, we're talking about breaking through in the glory of God. And, you know, in this season, even with the pandemic, our ministry has multiplied. Our ministry is prospered. I mean, every person's business within our ministry, I mean, has been just booming, even in midst of all the lockdowns, controls, fears, etc. And I know even for yourself, your ministry has just been booming too. Talk to us, you know, of why we should be expectant of greater provision in his glory, even in midst of these shaking, turbulent times. Well, again, you go to the book of Acts where they were persecuted. So Acts 2 was, was you know, the beginning. Then they started ministering. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. But by the time they got to Acts 4, they hit a wall. Like they really were like, oh, man. And I think fear came on the apostles, on some of them, because they said, oh, Lord, look at their threats. Give us boldness. So they're asking for boldness. That means there's something going on. There's a there's a threat. There's a fear. There's an insecurity. People are being put in jail. Like, oh, how are we going to make this? And so I think in that time they prayed for another outpouring and it, and it came. And then Peter's shadow healed the sick. And then it says not one lacked anything among them. Like, like, like the lack was not there at all. It doesn't mention at all in Acts 2 about the finances too much. But in Acts 4, it says, and even those who hold, had homes and land sold them. So extravagant giving, extravagant blessing for the harvest. And so I, I noticed the same. Like we were preaching way less, like yourself, the first few months, because you couldn't go anywhere. You couldn't, not everything, the whole world was shut. I was supposed to be in Italy. I was supposed to be doing crusades in Costa Rica. We did a big Awaken 2020, you know, 50,000 seat stadium. And then I had all these other stadiums lined up. Everything got got postponed because of the pandemic, as we say. And then the Lord told me, okay, shift. So do what I tell you. So I shifted. We did, we created a TV studio. We did a bunch of other stuff in favor. The favor of God, we didn't miss a beat. In fact, we, I think our ministry got way more blessed. I don't know how in the 2020 than we would in normal times. It just doesn't make, it doesn't make any logical sense. The only thing I can think of is we obey the Lord. When you obey the Lord and you make a shift at the right time, then you, favor hits your life. Really, it's just obeying, even if it sounds completely crazy. So, and again, being in the glory, but also obeying his voice. No, don't go here, go here. Don't do this, do that. And suddenly favor begins to come. So th we have to shift a lot of things. In 2020, a lot of the church had to shift the structures of how they operate. You know, the Chinese church, they just adapt. I mean, they, they probably had the worst communistic lockdown jail for 50 years. And those guys are flourishing because the Chinese have learned to adapt to whatever situation. Okay, you can't meet. Okay, we'll find another way. Uh, we meet in churches. We do it secretly. We do it overly. Like, I think the American church is starting to learn to be creative and not rich. Like, this is how you do church. This is how you do an evangelistic meeting. And that's the only way to do it. God's just blowing that out of the water. Like, the devil can't keep up with God. God can get, God's getting into North Korea. God can get into um, yeah. Mecca. There's no walls that can stop the wind of the Holy Spirit from getting in. So as long as we hear his voice, the gospel is going to, that's why I think America is actually poised for the greatest harvest of souls, because the greatest attack on the church has happened. And now, now it's God's turn. So when God goes, okay, devil, give me your best shot, your best shot. Okay, are you done? Now my turn. Oh, man, it's not going to be pent up demand because there's not been a lot of big meetings. When this thing fully opens, it's going to go crazy. I think we're going to get the biggest, and people are, are sick, they're worried, they're fearful, they lost jobs, the marriages are messed up. Fan, so that's the perfect time for God. You know, when 1929 crash happened and the stock market crashed and people were jumping out of buildings and windows because they lost all their money, that's right after that in the 30s, a huge revival broke out. So sometimes when the worst things happen, God will use it for good. He didn't bring it. You know, he's not the author of all of bad stuff and sickness and disease and, and fear. And But you know what he does? He'll use what the enemy means for harm and he'll turn it for good. So I really think the devil overplayed his hand. Mm -hmm. And the, the biggest thing that the biggest um, revenge on the devil is going to be losses of millions of souls from his kingdom into God's kingdom. That's really, that's bigger than politics. It's bigger than the economy. It's bigger than the number one thing the devil does not want is soul safe. That's it. That's the bottom line. So we're going to give him a run for his money, right? Come on. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, you've said a number of phenomenal things there, Dr. David, uh, but it really resonates with me because this is your payback season. 
This is the season where God himself, the Bible says, I will have vengeance on my I will have vengeance. So yeah. this is the payback season of recompense. And, you know, one of the prophetic words that I released that 2021, 21 is seven times three. When the enemy is, when the thief is caught with his hand in a cookie jar, he must pay back seven times recompense. So this is a triple anointing of recompense and payback. So God is releasing that to you in this season like never before. I believe it. Uh, you no, know, Dr. David, God is accelerating things. Things are moving. I love what you said. We need to ad adapt. We need to adjust. We need to be quick. And uh, right now there is a, an awakening from our sleeping slumber in the American church. But I believe right now that there is a greater glory mm -hmm. when we stand up in boldness for the truth, for the word of God. And also when we continue to gather, because that is not only essential, but exactly. that our kingdom commandments. We, I love the adaptability of doing these virtual Zoom meetings, etc. We need cyber evangelism. But how important do you think it is for us to keep gathering, meeting, being the ecclesia, being called out in the public places, yep. gathering as one for the Acts 2 outpouring of the Holy Ghost? Oh, we have to. The Bible says, do not forsake the, gather, the, the gathering of yourselves together. See, just for a short time, God allowed a lot of ministries even like based like church, small churches, small ministries, everybody and their mother now suddenly had to learn technology. But now that things open back up, they're going to have that following that they got on media, social media, internet, and then do physical meetings combined with the airwaves and the, and the internet. It's going to be a double portion harvest. I think God actually set this up so that way churches learn how to use technology so that when it opens back up for the physical meetings, they'll actually have way more people physically present because of the technology they're using now. Churches will be filled, ministries, evangelistic. I mean, I mean, we're, we're preparing now some crazy stuff in America and overseas. We're preparing some crazy, we have some stuff on the East Coast in, in uh, the end of April, 100 acres, a big outdoor crusade. We got all, West Coast, Pakistan, we got all kinds of stuff. Hundreds of, Pakistan be like 100 to 200,000. So, and, and you know, the, it's starting to open now. So when we had to learn how to adapt the first few months of March, March, April, May, now we got to learn to adapt to go back out. Some people are getting too comfortable just mm. doing it on, on the cyber, on their phone. Pastors are like, oh, I don't need to open my church, even though their state is allowing them to open. Some are still not opening. They're like, oh, no, we're going to play it extra safe. We're going to try to be even safer than the government. Like, what? So, no, it's time to get back out. Guys, get out of the closet. You were in the caves for a little while. King oh. David and his men, they were in the caves. They lay low. And when, now God says, come out and go for it. And so you got to come out. So you got to know when to pull back, but then you got to know when it's time to go. It's time to go out. The heart, even where you're at in California, it's starting to open up again. There's things are starting to open up. It, it's like it's time to. I, I believe there's a short window of time for the harvest in America, and if we don't take it, then we, we're going to lose the freedoms again. So we have to. But if we take our freedoms and use it and fill the churches and the stadiums and the parks, then the enemy won't be able to stop it. Wow. Amen. There is an unstoppable force coming. There is an unstoppable momentum of the kingdom of God. The remnants rising and the grassroots are bearing fruit right now. Totally. You know, I, I love this because we're talking about breakthrough to glory, especially in America. You know, we believe, you and I and so many other friends of ours, that America shall be saved. Totally. And it really is the season for us to focus in the great awakening in the United States of America. And we're seeing waves of it, pockets of it, and it's just growing and intensifying right now. And as we're talking about breaking through into glory in this generation and beyond, we know that there's going to be supernatural provision, protection. There's going to be supernatural presence. What other things can we expect from the greater glory in this season from uh, the presence of God? So, yeah, so as the times seem to get darker, like when you watch the news, you're like, oh, wow, our freedoms are being taken away on Facebook or, or the government's passing this law or that law. And a lot of people get in a frenzy when they see that. But see, when, when that happens, the, whenever the stakes get higher, the more the danger is, the higher the reward. Like when mm -hmm. I go to nations like Muslim countries that are more dangerous, I always see crazy awesome stuff happen because the higher the risk, the higher the reward. So Come the on. darker it gets short term, the greater God's going to move. When the enemy comes in, period, then like a flood, the Lord's going to come in. 
And so the flood of the Lord, a lot of people thought, oh, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will, will no, no. When the enemy comes in, period, like a flood, the Lord's going to come. So I think we're going to expect sudden, like, like Purim, sudden reversals, sudden things that, oh man, that looks like that's set in yeah. stone. No, nothing can change that. Boom. Overnight, suddenly the things open up. The nation opens up. Salvation start happening. Breakouts over here, over like things you never would have thought. It's the suddenlies of God, unexpected breakthroughs. We expect it, but we don't know what we're expecting exactly. Surprise breakthroughs are going to start happening. And it, it's you know, I lived in the mission field for 12 years in France, with very, very atheistic, very much against the church, against the board again. So we, I, I was used to the police coming to police coming to my meetings. The neighbors saying, "Oh, this, these guys are colds or whatever." So we learned how to adapt in that situation. And we were doing big civic centers and all kind of stuff. Then when I came to the U.S., I was like, oh, this is easy. Now it's starting to get to how it was when I used to live in France, in wow. America, where you had to be careful what you said. You yeah. couldn't just, you got to be really wise with who you're interacting with. Uh, you can't show all your cards to everybody. It depends on, but you got to be stealthy like the Chinese church. And so I kind of been prepared for this. So for me, nothing phases me. As long as you're in the glory, I mean, look at Daniel in, in, in the kingdom he was in. Look at, you know, Joseph. I mean, he was in wicked places, and God did it. This is a season where God wants to reward those people who are standing up for the things of God. And, uh, you know, God's about to reward you. The Bible says, I am your very great reward. I am the one who stands up for you. And so we're about to see great kingdom exploits in the season. We're about to see mega movements mega miracles and god is not done with the united states god's not done with america god's not done with california i believe we're really going to see every state every 50 state in the united states really popping off with revival and there's going to be this is a season of great kingdom exploits the bible says that he is our very great reward are you ready for jesus to reward you not the government not a stimuli check plan it's going to be Christ himself feeding you from hand to hand, mouth to mouth. Man of God, Dr. David, you know, this interview for the breaker has been so rich. I believe there's a breakthrough, not just in the anointing of God, but in the glory of God. I Amen. want Dr. David to pray for an impartation that Amen. the same glory that Jesus walked in, that your ministry is tapping into, that the, our friends or viewers would receive that as well. Can you please pray for us? Yeah, let, let me pray about it. Yeah, I'll pray. I'm kidding. All right, Lord, I pray and I bless those watching right now that the glory of God will come on them, not just goosebumps, not just giftings, not even just anointings, but the open heaven of God's glory above, saturating their inner core of their being. Let your presence fill them right now. Let the kabod, the weighty, yeah. heavy glory of heaven that's beyond their own selves come over them now, overshadow them, Father. In Jesus' name, let it be so thick and strong they don't want to get out of it. They, they can't wait to be in that presence. It won't be a duty. It won't be, oh, I have to go pray. I should pray. I don't want to pray. They, they can't wait to be in the presence. I pray that glory will be so thick on them like Catherine Coleman. She would say, please don't grieve my Holy Spirit. Whatever it takes to get in that realm, Lord, I pray they would stay in that realm. They would be addicted to being in your presence, Lord, to being close and intimate with you. The King of glory, enter in now and shift things over people's lives. Break off discouragement. Bring hope. Bring excitement. Bring joy, Father. Bring a conviction of sin where they say, you know what? I don't want to do this stuff anymore. I want to go all out for Jesus. Lord, break off every chain and let your glory just invade people in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on. Amen and amen. Dr. David, we love you. We love Dr. Stephanie. Thank you so much Thank for releasing the glory of God. We're expecting of what God's going to do. Thanks so much for being on our show today. Thank you so much, Ben. We love you. We're proud of all you're doing, man. You're doing so in such a short time. You've grown so fast. God's going to do more with you, man. Amen. Thank you. I receive it. We appreciate you, man of God. Talk to you soon, sir. Talk to you soon, my friend. Bless you. Wow. People of God, that was Dr. David Herzog with the glory zone, with the awakening. There is a move of God's glory and presence taking place right now. And it's unstoppable. You're not going to miss it because it's going to come in every city, every home, every family unit all across the earth. If the times are dark, then the light is going to shine brighter. Get ready for supernatural provision, protection, and even promotion. Because as Dr. David shared, the glory of God increases and moves and activates the kingdom realm. People of God, this is Pastor Ben with Dr. David Herzog today talking about breaking through in the glory of God. Let us know if this ministered to you, if this encouraged you. 
comment below. What did you learn today? What did you receive from this broadcast today? And of course, please share, 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 and subscribe. We appreciate you. We love you. This is Pastor Dr. Ben Lim with The Breaker, where we're believing for breakthrough in every area of your life. Until our next episode, God bless.